Um, welcome to your ultimate communications guide to Giving Tuesday 2024. My name is Lisa. I'm the marketing and communications manager here at Mighty Cause. If you've attended one of our past webinars, you probably have seen my face before. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of today's webinar, just a couple of housekeeping things. So one, if you have any questions, um, please utilize the questions tool on your Zoom control panel. Um, that is the easiest way for me to catch questions. I'll stop um, occasionally throughout the webinar um, to see in the chat or in the questions if any questions do pop up, but the questions tool just makes it easier for me to keep track of any questions that do come in through the chat. Um, as well, if there's any technical issues, if I'm not, if you can't hear me well, um, or uh, I'm glitching or something, please feel free to let me know also um, in the chat or in the uh, questions tool. All right, so just a little background about Mighty Cause. For those of you who are brand new to Mighty Cause, not familiar with us, we've been in the nonprofit space since 2006. So we've been around for a long time. We're one of the biggest technology providers for giving days. So if you participate in North Texas Giving Day, I see a couple of Texas organizations. If you participate in Colorado Gives Day, Georgia Gives, we provide the technology for those giving days. But we also provide technology year round for nonprofits. Uh, we offer a whole suite of tools and features for nonprofits to utilize for their fundraising for a particular campaign or year round. Um, so we have tools that uh, like integrations, um, data analytics, um, donation processing, et cetera. The list kind of goes on. So just a little information about our Giving Tuesday event. So every year for the past, I would say more than 11 years, we've hosted our own Giving a Tuesday event. Giving Tuesday is on December 3rd this year. So the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, um, you can register for free um, on givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Registration for our event is completely free. You don't have to pay anything to register. And by registering, you'll have access to all of our resources, our toolkits, and you'll also be eligible for prizes that we'll be giving out this Giving Tuesday. Um, we haven't uh, officially announced our prizes yet, but we'll have um, over $20,000 in prizes available for Giving Tuesday this year. Um, and so uh, be on the lookout for an email probably coming up this week about our prize pool. Um, early giving, so when you can start receiving donations um, that will count towards prizes, will it, the early giving begins November 19th. Um, and just a clarification too, if you are participating in a giving event by one of the giving events that we provide technology for, uh, such as Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday, um, you don't need to register for our Giving Tuesday event. You'll just participate in the giving event um, that utilizes that Mighty Cost technology. So I talked a little bit about what you receive when, if you register uh, by and participate in our Giving Tuesday event. Um, so here's just, again, if you go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, that's where you'll see the registration button. And the registration process is divided up into two sections. It's super simple and easy. Um, you'll have to fill out a registration form. Um, so it's an easy registration form, should take you a couple minutes. Once you submit it, you'll also have to make sure that your organization page to-do list is complete. The to-do list really is just um, a couple of small tasks that just make sure that your profile is ready. So adding a logo, adding a banner image, very easy things to do. Um, so once those two things are complete, you'll be automatically approved for the event. Um, we also have an Accelerate uh, plan on Mighty Cause. So by registering, participating on Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, you'll have access to a lot of our tools and features um, like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, uh, our, uh, sorry, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, our donation processing, checkout form, et cetera. Our Accelerate plan provides additional tools and features that you may need for your Giving Tuesday campaign or year round. Um, so these are just a couple of things that are available on our Accelerate plan, like our supporters tool, text to give, our embeddable donation form, et cetera. All right, so now that 
we've got that out of the way. So just our, let's go over our agenda for today. So we're first gonna be talking over communication basics. Um, then we're gonna be talking about email marketing and social media content planning, um, all about the social media algorithm and some hacks that you can utilize regarding the algorithm, some social media tips and best practices. And then I've gathered some examples of great social media posts other nonprofits have created, um, and we'll go through and um, see those. All right, so let's talk through communication basics. So when you're coming up or when you're thinking about your Giving Tuesday communications plan, what exactly is a communications plan? What, what does that encompass? A communications plan is a roadmap for delivering your message to your audience. How do you tell your supporters or your network what you do and why you need their help and that you need their help now? So some key components of a communication plan. So you want to think about what is your actual objective? What do you want your audience to do? What are you trying to get them to do? So I know it may seem obvious for Giving Tuesday to donate, right? Um, but maybe it's also that you are running a volunteer program or you have a match currently um, going on, um, or maybe you have... Um, an email that you're going out to uh, previous donors and you want them to donate again, what exactly is the action that you want them to do? Like, what is the specific call to action? Who are you reaching out to? Um, you want to identify who are going to be your audience groups and your audience groups are going to be based off of affinity. So the people that are most invested in your nonprofit and the success of your campaign. And sometimes these groups are going to overlap. But some examples of groups are going to be your board of directors, your donors, recurring donors, your social media followers, your casual supporters, corporate sponsors, staff, et cetera. Um, you want to think about who you can appeal to and maybe also identify who you will appeal to that's outside of your stakeholders and your donors. So your channels. So when it comes to your communication plan, where are you going to be communicating? Is it going to be primarily email? Are you going to be using your website, social media, um, in a physical location? Are you going to be having flyers? How are you going to communicate? And then key messages and timing. What exactly is the message that you're sending out? Um, and when are you doing that? So let's talk a little bit about how we go ahead and do that. So one thing I always talk about in my webinars is goal setting. Um, I feel like a broken record sometimes when talking about goal setting, but I think in terms of any fundraising campaign or any communication plan that you start, you want to think about what exactly is the goal that you want out of it, right? Is it board engagement? Is it that you want past donors to... Um, return and donate? Is it just getting more dollars? Um, is there a specific communication goal that you have for this Giving Tuesday? Maybe you want to have people more um, invested or looking at your Instagram presence. Maybe you want to create a higher email open rate from last year. Um, you, I would recommend looking at the data from last year of your communication or from this past year and see what are realistic goals and what are realistic metrics to have. Because then after Giving Tuesday, when you're looking at your success, that's going to be something that you want to look at is, okay, from these emails that we sent out, what was our open rate? What was our click-through rate? What was our conversion rate, right? All of this work that we put in, what was actually effective and useful? So getting um, used to looking at that information and metrics is going to be helpful in deciding, well, what do you want to do moving forward? Maybe there was something that you enacted last year that you see wasn't as effective as you thought it would, and it's going to save your time this year by maybe changing up what you're doing. So um, when talking about your messaging for Giving Tuesday, I like to first think about what exactly is your messaging as a nonprofit? Because I think it helps then dive deep into what is your messaging for Giving Tuesday. So you want to define two to three key messages that you want your audience um, to know about your nonprofit in 2024. 
Um, this is going to be your starting point, right? This is going to be the thing that you're going to maybe hit home in your communication. So what exactly is your mission? What's your vision for your work? What's the impact? Um, so here's just an example that I put together for my make-believe Lisa's food pantry key messages. Uh, we believe that people have a right to be free from hunger and that food is a human right. Communities have a responsibility to care for their own, and our food pantry is a way to care um, people in our community. Natural disasters hit the most underserved people in our community the hardest, and we are committed to helping them make it through. All right, so that is our kind of nonprofit key messaging that we have. So then we want to kind of dial in, in terms of Giving Tuesday, what is our specific Tuesday in relation to that overall key messaging? What are you trying to achieve, right? If you're asking someone from a donation, why? <laughs> what is the impact that that dollar is going to make? Um, so that top messaging, as I mentioned, is going to get filtered down into your Giving Tuesday messaging. Um, so you want to um, think about what are some key facts and figures that you can bring into this messaging? So in this example of my Giving Tuesday campaign messaging, um, we are raising $10,000 so we can afford to expand our food pantries, physical space, and feed even more people in our community. There is increased need for our services in the community, and we must grow to meet the need. We want to provide 100,000 meals by the end of 2024, and this campaign will set us up to do that. So again, we kind of have our overarching nonprofit communication messaging, and then what our Giving Tuesday messaging, what exactly we're trying to do for Giving Tuesday. So when thinking about these talking points in storytelling, you want to follow the classic arc. So you want to think about what is your challenge? What is the solution? What's the impact? And then what's your call to action? And as I mentioned, you want to um, get some facts and figures and statistics, right? I think donors, especially nowadays, um, and in particular younger donors, they really crave transparency and knowing what exact impact their dollar is making. So having stats such as, you know, by receiving $10,000, we can provide 100 meals to families in need in our community, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, if you need uh, help or support, you can always reach out to if you have staff members, um, you know, see what important stats um, that they think that would be best communicate. And also, I think it's best to share those key, your key Giving Tuesday messages to your um, team so that everyone is aware of kind of what the goal is and what your communication is for Giving Tuesday. Um, just a quick question I see coming in. Um, will the presentation to us be shared via email? Yes. So uh, after this webinar is being recorded, we'll share a recording of this webinar tomorrow, as well as a copy of this slide deck. Um, and as well, I'm a freelance donor, engagement strategist, and writer. I help organizations translate their mess missions into strategic mes messaging that authentically engages active activates community supporters. That's awesome. So if anyone needs support from Brandy, that could be a really great reference um, and helpful asset. All right. So a challenge I like to do sometimes um, on these webinars is I want you to answer this question in one brief sentence. What does your nonprofit do? How would a donation affect your organization? And how would a how could a supporter, a donor, support your organization? And I love the mindset of how would you explain this to a child? Because if you think about it from that lens, that's going to be the way that your message is going to be kind of put into the simplest way, the simplest communication way. So I'm going to put a minute on the clock or a minute and a half, um, and I I'm going to challenge you guys to think about that sentence. And then once you're done, put it in the chat. We'll read a couple of them. Um, and if you um, want to also save this for later, you can do that as well. But I'll just put a minute on the clock and we'll, if you want to share that, that will be awesome.
Okay, so that's about a minute. I see a couple of them. Um, if you're still doing the challenge, feel free to add it in here. I think it's helpful just to see how other nonprofits describe their nonprofit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pull a couple. Um, so supports college students during their educational journey. Super clear um, and super simple. Um Family Advocates provides court appointed advocates to abused and neglected children, along with supervised visitation program in our home-like setting. Super simple in terms of what exactly that you do. Feed the hungry and homeless of Tulsa through a soup kitchen and food pantry. Awesome. So these kind of brief sentences are a great starting point in terms of how you're going to be describing your nonprofit to people and on Giving Tuesday. So um, let's jump into email marketing. So why is email so important? So um, if you haven't checked out the 2024 um, MNR Benchmarks report, um, in the report, um, they found that in 2023, 16% of all online revenue was directly sourced from email. So that's a big group of individuals who are making donations from the emails that are received um, and come from you. So when you're thinking about your emails or when you're composing your emails, you want to make sure that you have a strong call to action. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. Of what are you exactly asking and that language that you're asking? Um, you want it to be short. Um, you want it to be um, really in um, your face in the email. So you want the color and placement to play a significant role when someone opens your email. And they should be hyperlinked to the direct place that you want donors to donate. You don't want them to just go on your website unless on your homepage you have a donate button in big letters. You want to take them to the easiest place where they can just make a donation. So the fastest way that they can make a gift and they don't get lost on your website or looking for where to donate. When you're thinking about your communication in terms of email, you also wanna think about your email segmentation. So what exactly is email segmentation? It means when you take your email list, so you take your list of maybe all of your supporters and your contacts, and you're going to split them up into smaller groups based off behaviors and their interests or profiles. So some examples of key segments that you want to consider for Giving Tuesday is your 2023 Giving Tuesday donors, right? You want to write an email to them of, hey, you made your donation last year. This is the impact it made. This is what we're trying to do this year. Make a gift. Um donors that are in danger of churning. Um, so if there are recurring donors that um, are, it's their annual time, um, this is a time to also reach out to those. Unretained donors of 2023. So if there are, the, if you want to look at your list of donors that you've given to have given this year and see who hasn't given from last year again, um, that's also a group to reach out to. Um, so here are all the different segments because your communication for each of them may be a little bit different and it may be very specific in terms of your languaging. All right, so a couple of different email con content um, examples of different types of emails that you can um, send out for your Giving Tuesday campaign. So one type of email is an impact story. So um, an impact story is really a framing device. It's sharing a story of an individual, a group, um, an animal, um, if you're an animal organization that your nonprofit has served, and it demonstrates the kind of work that your organization does. Um, it should be something that accurately illustrates your work. Um, and it's really about showing instead of telling the work that you do. Um, why these are always impactful, um, like the name, is that it creates an emotional connection with donors, right? I think most commonly you'll see this with animal organizations where, the, where they will highlight a specific animal and they'll share, you know, what they've gone through and how their nonprofit um, has provide support for them. 
of course, when you are thinking about an impact story, um, you want to think about it in terms of in visuals. So you want to include a video and images that really highlights um, the story. And you also want to make sure that you get permission to tell that story, right? If it is a specific person, if it is an alumni of a program, if, if it's someone you have supported, you want to make sure that you have their permission to share their story and share their images or any video of them in your communication. So another type of um, email content is kind of the head honcho email. So an email that comes from your executive director or board chair. Um, usually um, emails that do come from an individual um, can perform higher. So having it come from um, a specific name and especially your executive director, um, it's going to kind of perk eyes. Um, and it's really effective in terms of kind of having an email come from someone important of your organization and sharing the need for support um, and the relevance of your organization in 2024. Another type of email that you can send out during Giving Tuesday is your 2024 accomplishments. What have you accomplished so far in 2024? You want to show your donors how effective your organization is. So again, this is where you're going to use those talking points of statistics and impact metrics. What have you been able to do so far? And that can help also define, again, your, 20, your Giving Tuesday goals. We were able to, this year so far, feed a thousand families in need. This Giving Tuesday, we're trying to increase that by 2,000, you know, et cetera. Um, and sometimes using an infographic or again, any metrics, visuals can be really impactful in sharing that success. Um, this is also, I think, a useful tool for year end fundraising. So e outlining all of that you've accomplished throughout the year and then the final days of the year sharing that information. And I also think when you're thinking about your an email that covers this 2024 accomplish, accomplishments, it's really a because of you framing, right? It's because of you, we were able to do X, Y, and Z. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Um, Another type of email content that you can utilize is your goal setting for 2025, right? And this can be, you know, some of this stuff is you can combine together, um, such as like your 2024 accomplishments and what your 2025 goals, but what is your organization planning to do in 2025? Maybe you have lofty goals that you want to do. You are planning on building a building, Um you are, you know, want to create a new program, you're building a school, et cetera. So what are your plans and how can donors be invested and help with the work that you're doing for 2025? So you want to outline those key goals that you have um, and make sure that they're buying in into, you know, that support um, before your year end as well. So Another type of email that you can utilize for Giving Tuesday is a countdown email. So this is going to be uh, an urgency type of email. We have one day left for Giving Tuesday. This is the last day of Giving Tuesday. Help us reach our goal before midnight, before time is running out. Um, you want to use this judiciously, right? Not every email can be urgent. So you maybe want to have one email on Giving Tuesday or two that um, are an urgent type of emails. And again, remind supporters of any deadlines that you may have, including Giving Tuesday, but maybe you have a match that you um, that is going to end at midnight. Um, so uh, you want to make sure that you are articulating that and communicating that. Um, as well, we talked about donor retention of having a dedicated email to your donors from 2023 that you haven't retained this year. And you want to use strong language there. You want to use language like give again, your impact made a difference, double your impact, et cetera. And then, of course, as I also just mentioned, is matching grants. If you do have a matching grant, um, this is a great way to drive donations. Um, and you definitely want to make sure that you have an email ready for when your match is live. Um, if you're not uh, kind of heading towards your match goal, 
sending an email out during your match and then towards the end of your match if you're still not going to hit your match goal and as well at the end of announcing that you've hit your match goal if you have um, hit your match goal. So we have um, some email templates available to you that you can utilize for your emails. So you can check out um, our Giving Tuesday email templates and best practices. As I mentioned, um, this uh, slide deck is going to be emailed to you, so you don't have to worry about um, having this link right now, but we'll send this out to you. Um, but as well, if you're registered for our Giving Tuesday event, it's also available in our toolkit. Um, and so here's also an example of an email schedule that you want to think through for Giving Tuesday. So two weeks before Giving Tuesday, you're going to send out an email. That's also the start of Giving Tuesday, um, early giving on Mighty Cause. Um, then one week before, there's one week until Giving Tuesday. That is also a good opportunity. One day before, on the day of, and then one day after Giving Tuesday to share your results. Um, so in terms of what do you utilize for all of your email communication, um, one thing I recommend is MailChimp because they do offer a free um, a free pl a plan for, um, you know, first time users or if you don't have a large contact base. Um, one thing that's available on our Accelerate plan is we do have a direct integration with MailChimp. Um, so you can sync your contacts and any donation you receive on Mighty Calls will then get created into a MailChimp contact and will be added to your MailChimp audience within MailChimp. So it makes um, your donation flow and your email marketing much more seamless and easier. Um, if you don't utilize MailChimp, but you utilize another email marketing system, um, our Accelerate plan also has an integration with Zapier, um, and Zapier has thousands of um, in-app integrations it can create. Um, so if you want to check out Zapier and see if your email marketing system is there, if it is, then um, on Mighty Cause, it would be able to connect um, and have donations flow into there. All right, so before we get into the next one, which is social media content planning, I'm just going to double check the questions that we have. Um, what specific resources, training, and support does Mighty Cause promote Giving Tuesday? Yeah. So we have um, our whole list of web or recorded webinars um, available to you. Um, you also have dedicated support on Giving Tuesday, and we also have templates, graphics, um, a checklist, uh, a planning guide um, available in our toolkit. Um, if uh, if I participate in Giving Big, do I have to reapply for Giving Tuesday? Um, let me get back to on that. I'm not sure if um, if you're talking about give the, uh, it depends on the Giving Day that you're participating in. Um, if it has a dedicated Giving Tuesday event, you want to just register for that one. Again, we're, I'm referring to ones that utilize Mighty Calls technology. Um, who... Um, who can we connect our communications plan to as far as our nonprofit is com um, is concerned? Um, I'm not sure your question, if you could specify that um, in terms of who you, what you mean by that. How many campaigns is suggested to create in case we have different projects or goals? Or is it suggested to focus on a single campaign? Yeah, I would, if we're talking about Giving Tuesday, I would have a single campaign um, because, again, you don't want it to be really confusing for donors. You don't want them to go to different pages, etc. cetera. Um, if you really have a separate program, you're kind of you want to have different donors. You want them to donate, you know, maybe some of your donors, they're only going to donate to this program. and You don't want them donating to something else. Um, then you may want to consider doing that, but I would have it as least complicated as possible. So I would recommend just doing one, one campaign. Um, should these key messages be in communication, be in the communication or Mighty Cause campaign website? Um, so both, right? So on your organization profile, you're going to want to talk about your nonprofit and the same rules apply in terms of communication, in terms of Again, the storytelling arc of your what's the challenge, solution, impact, and the call to action. Um, 
do I promote Giving Tuesday to just donors? Um, you want to communicate, you want to promote Giving Tuesday to your network. So your friends, your family, to donors, to board members, um, to if you, if you're volunteering for your nonprofit, to coworkers, to your friends, coworkers, et cetera. Um, I, I've shared this story before in a webinar, but um, I became, I began donating to an organization um, because my sister had a friend from graduate school who had started a nonprofit. And my sister had mentioned to me, oh, I have this friend. She's starting this nonprofit. Um, you may, I think she shared me her social post. Um, and I, I checked out their page and they were building a school um, in Kenya. And they kind of laid out like what their goals were. And I, I became a donor. And again, I was not a direct contact. It was uh, my sister's friend from graduate school. So that's how you kind of start growing your donor base by asking people to also share your organization um, to their network of people. Can you use the Mighty Cause widget in MailChimp? Um, so you're not going to use the widget in MailChimp. The widget is for websites. So you would embed the widget on a website to add a donate button to um, oh, email. You just want to add a hyperlink. So you just highlight the text or the image and add the link there. Um, I see. Uh, can you talk about constant contact? I'm not too familiar with constant contact, but Constant Contact is, I believe, on Zapier. So there is an integration available between Mighty Cause and Constant Contact. Um, um, okay, I see someone saying an issue with seeing the deck. Let me know if you guys are not seeing the slide deck on um, the screen. Um, do you need to create a, um, sorry, I'm skipping question. Okay. All right. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people say they see it. Um, who is responsible for the nonprofit communication plan for your organization? Um, well, that depends on how big your organization is. If we're talking about, you know, if it's just you for your nonprofit, you're going to have to be um, the head honcho on that. Um, but if you have, you know, a marketing manager, um, communications manager, communi a communication specialist, et cetera, they're going to be your comms marketing team are going to be the people that help lay that out. However, if you're the executive director, you're probably going to want to have input in terms of, you know, what is the exact language that you're sending out on Giving Tuesday and what that plan is. Um, do we need to create a specific campaign on Medicos for Giving Tuesday or will people just use our org page to donate? That's a great question. Um, most people, I would say you can just use your org page and change the language on there a bit if you want it more specific to Giving Tuesday. Um, pe some people do have create specific Giving Tuesday campaign pages, which you're also welcome to do. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, it, it really just depends, but you can just use your org page. You don't have to create a dedicated fundraising page um, for Giving Tuesday. Um, is there a way to link my Giving Tuesday campaign to my nonprofit page on Mighty Cause? I registered. I think it was approved, but I can't find my Giving Tuesday page with the checklist. Um, so you want to make sure that you are an admin for um, just Mighty Cause uh, or for your org page. And then um, you will be able to see it on your org page dashboard. If you're not an admin yet, then you may not be seeing it. Um, okay. I'm just going to pause questions for right now, and then I will move forward again. If I missed your question in the chat, just add it to the questions, um, tool, and then I'll get to it at the, um, in our next break or at the end. All right. So social media content and planning. All right. So giving Tuesday was a date built to inspire generosity, right? It was a day that was created as a response to kind of all the materialistic buying during black Friday and cyber Monday. It is a day around the world that is dedicated to 
you guys to nonprofits, to giving back. And the name Giving Tuesday also includes a hashtag, hashtag Giving Tuesday. Um, so social media is definitely going to be one of the primary places that you're going to want to connect and reach out to donors. So when you're thinking about the content, the, the material that you want to share on social media, that's going to be everything from videos, GIFs, live stream, memes, blog posts, infographics, et cetera. And your, the role of content, obviously, at the end of the day, is your call to action, but it is there to also educate your users, to create a conversation, to gain attention, to entertain, um, to share your message, as I mentioned, and to create engagement. So when you're thinking about your social media planning, what exactly do you want to do this year is, a kind of, again, kind of going back to the goal setting what are what were your results last year? What worked? What didn't? Did you use social media? Did you not use social media? Did you try a new platform? Um, was it uh, useful of your time? Um, you want to think smarter. Uh, you want to work smarter, not harder. Um, you're not going to use every social media platform. So what works the best for you? And you want to define those goals, right? Do you, you want to gain more followers? Do you want to gain more engagement? Do you want more people liking or sharing your posts? Um, and what content is going to help you achieve that? And we'll talk about the type of content that you can create. All right, so here are the kind of planning methods or planning elements for a social media campaign. You want to decide on your theme and your message. And we talked about that messaging a lot earlier. What are what, what is the the message that you're sending on social media? Um, but you also want to think about, you know, the metrics that you want to measure for your success um, and the metrics that you're planning on sharing. You then want to create and follow a content calendar. So you want to build a timeline of your um, posting, and that can kind of follow your email schedule as well. Um, and you can utilize spreadsheets um, to kind of keep track of this or any management system that you use um, and schedule as much content ahead as possible. And we'll talk about some scheduling uh, tools that you can utilize. And you also want to establish a process, right? So who is going to be doing this? Is this going to be you? Is this your marketing or communications manager? And what exactly are they going to be doing? And what tools are they going to be using? And where are they going to be posting? So some um, content to consider, we talked about this briefly. So a campaign video, so something that's visually and audibly sharing your story, social media images and graphics. So shareable images that, again, show the impact of your nonprofit, photos that are related to your campaign and share a story, and um, infographics. So again, kind of sharing your metrics, sharing what you've done so far this year or what you've done so far you know, so far in the history of your organization. And these are going to be the top social media platforms that you're going to want to consider posting on or utilize. So Facebook, Instagram, X or Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. So as I talked about, you want to stick with what you know. Um, when you uh, review your analytics or review your, you know, social media um kind of uh, when your social media platforms, um, where are your users most active? And you can utilize Facebook or Instagram insights or Google analytics to kind of delve into that. But as I mentioned, we're going to work smarter, not harder. What is going to be the most effective platform for your nonprofit? If you don't think that your users are going to be on TikTok or your donors going to be on TikTok or you know, on LinkedIn, don't use those platforms. You know, you want to use your time wisely and be most effective. Um, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, there's no need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to social media. Um, and sometimes with social media, there is, can be a, a some cost to it, but also you can use what you have, use your existing images or videos, um, nowadays, everyone, if you do want to do video, it's all shot on smartphones. There are free tools, and I'll talk about a little later some other free tools that you can utilize. But Canva is a really great asset if you don't have it. 
as a nonprofit, you can have a free plan and you can utilize great social media templates there. Um, you know, loop in volunteers. There are always, you know, I volunteer for a nonprofit and I found them through volunteermatch.org or .com. Um, so there can be people out there who want to support or help a nonprofit um, with the work that they're doing. And, you know, just remember that great content isn't about budget. It's about creativity. It's about sharing your impact um, and having it super clear. So let's talk about the social media algorithm. So when we talk about the social media algorithm, you first one, we're going to talk about KPI. So what exactly is KPI in social media speech or talk? Um, KPI means your key performance indicators. So when it comes to measuring and, pro and proving your social media success, this is going to be the thing that you look at to figure out, is your social media content actually successful? Is it a return on your investment if you do plan on putting money into social media planning? So there's going to be a couple of things to that go into your KPI. So your reach, how many people are actually viewing your content? How many people are seeing it? Your engagement, are people liking, commenting, clicking, or sharing? And your conversion, so the number of people who are actually taking the desired action of your post. Are they making a donation? Are they signing up for something, et cetera? So social media algorithms are designed to prioritize content that keeps users engaged. Um, that is their job, right? They want to make sure people are on their platform. So they're going to try to um, create con or show content that they think will have their users stay on the platform. So the algorithm takes into account both the content itself, so what you're posting, but also the preferences and behaviors of people on the platform. Um, and as I just mentioned, they're ultimately going to serve the goals of the platform, which is keeping people on there, keeping them engaged. So if a friend likes something, you may see that content. Um, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> I know some people um, are concerned that some social media platforms are listening in on them because you know, someone talked about something and then it came up as an ad on their social platforms. A lot of the time, it's also because they're very smart in terms of the data that they're getting. If you have Googled something and you're in close relation to someone, they will show you that because they know that you have a connection with that person. And if that person likes something, you may like that. Um, so what does the algorithm actually look at when we're talking about social media algorithms? And each one looks at things a bit differently, but this is just higher level. So it's going to look at engagement, right? Platforms are going to prioritize posts that have high engagement, likes, shares, comments, um, relationships, users who are more likely to see content from accounts that they've interacted with before, or again, their network of people have interacted with before. A lot of platforms, I would say most of the platforms now, they're going to prioritize videos um, or anything with interactive formats. So live stream, polls, um, again, they want people who are engaged on their platform. So they're going to prioritize that content. Whatever can keep people there the longest, they're going to prioritize that content. Um, in particular, Facebook and Instagram loves videos and prioritize them in users' feeds. Um, so that means that with videos, you might get more organic reach, so more people who are naturally going to be seeing that on their, their feed. And how relevant is your content to target audiences? Does it have trending hashtags or sounds, which we'll talk a little bit about in TikTok? So some algorithm hacks. So how can you hack the algorithm without you know, spending necessarily money. So you can en encourage engagement early. So ask for comments like shares to trigger the algorithm. You can ask your board members or your staff or again, your family and friends, hey, can you share this post? Can you like it? Can you make a comment? Um, that all helps in um, increasing the reach of those posts. You want to leverage stories and reels, as we talked about, kind of uh, video is king on TikTok. Uh, well, TikTok, yes, but on um, Instagram and Facebook. So 
utilizing video and stories and reels um, is going to increase your reach, um, but also utilizing their features like stickers or hashtags and captions is in going to increase that as well. Engaging with other content. So not just having people like your status, but also what are you doing on your uh, on your account? So are you commenting on posts? Are you liking other comments? Are you sharing relevant posts? Um, that also helps visibility of your own posts. Are you using hashtags wisely? So are you actually using hashtags that are related to your audience um, or will help target your audience? Um, and as well as tagging collaborators. So tagging partners, sponsors, um, you know, anyone who you're working with. Um, that's also a great way to increase your reach. But can you overall outsmart the algorithm? So kind of as we talked about, the way the algorithm works essentially feeds the, it means that the algorithm works essentially um, to feed curated content specifically to each user. So to a certain extent, there isn't a way to get around it. Um, there's the only way to really circum circumvent the algorithm is to pay for advertising. Um, all social media platforms are free to users. And a lot of these platforms, they make money from selling ads. And therefore, it doesn't serve their interest to give businesses free reach. And that's why they push for advertising, such as Facebook and Instagram advertising. Um, so the real reality makes two things imperative. You need to budget for boosts and posts on social media. Um, and you need to understand how to work with the algorithm, with social media al algorithms, which we talked about. Um, with budgeting and for ads um, or boosts on social media, um, you may need to, as we talked about, budget for it, but it's also not necessarily required, right? Just because you you don't have to necessarily pay for an ad or a boost, um, but it is helpful. So to pay or not to pay, um, you may have 5,000 followers on Facebook, but not all 5,000 followers are going to see your posts. Um, so that's where boosting or creating targeted ads is helpful. Um, I think if you haven't dabbled in um, Facebook advertising or Instagram advertising, um, I think this is a good opportunity to test it out, but in particular with boosting posts. So there are two types of things you can do on Facebook, Instagram. So one is you can create a targeted ad or you can just boost your post where they will share it to a larger audience. Um, and boosting posts, I think, is a good way to, a good place to start out. Um, and you don't have to start out with a huge amount of money. You can just test it out this year by simply investing $20. Um, and that can help increase your brand awareness. It can help with clicks. Um, what's great about social media, I will say advertising, is that a little can go a long way. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean this is automatically going to increase donations, but it's going to mean more people are going to see your organization on their social medias. Um, so if you are new to starting a to starting a boosted post, um, you want to you can choose when you are boosting a social media post on Facebook or Instagram to target specific demographics. Um, interests, behaviors that align with your current audience. So it allows you to reach people that are similar to those that already are your donors or already your supporters. So you can target your specific city. You can also target users, for example, that follow, you know, a local shelter, et cetera. Um, you can get really specific in terms of who you want to target for your posts. Um, if you do choose to create a targeted ad, um, one thing that you can do is create a lookalike audience that um, your ad can go out to. So what a lookalike audience in Facebook is, you can essentially give them a list of your users and they will find similar users based on that, that they will target. Um, so I think in general, when you're also, if you're planning on boosting um, a post or, uh, you are going to do use targeted ads. 
Um, you get more bang for your buck by utilizing also high quality content. So you want to make sure that you have an eye-catching visual or something that, again, kind of creates engagement. Maybe it's a donor spotlight. Maybe it is, um, you know, a program spotlight, et cetera. At the end of the day, if the content isn't engaging, people aren't going to click on it, even if a lot of people see it. Um, so some things just to also know about Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, so there is an ad review process. So it kind of takes about 24 hours for them to review your ad. And they're going to be looking at um, images, text, targeting, positioning, your content um, to see, again, the relevancy of it. Um, with Facebook and Instagram ads, also they're going to restrict ads that fall into social issues, elections, or politics. Um, that's just something to be aware of, especially with the social issues one. Um, I, I know some nonprofits who have had issues um, because they've been triggered by Instagram or Facebook um, that their content is within the social issues realm. Um, so also advertisers, are they're not going to be able to run um, new ads about social issues, elections, or politics in the U.S. from started last night to Tuesday, the end of the election. So they're not allowed, people are not allowed to run ads related to um, any of that for right now. All right, I'm gonna move forward. I'll go, we're probably gonna go over, but I'll answer questions at the end just because we still have a lot of content to get through. So social media tips and best practices. I wanna make sure we get to the examples. Um, so of course you wanna utilize the hashtag, hashtag giving Tuesday. Um, and you want to schedule ahead of time um, and you want to talk with your audience and not at them. Um, one of the things you can utilize is also referral codes. So if you're utilizing Mighty Cause um, and registered for our platform, if you want to kind of track where people are coming from based off where you're sharing the link, like you're sharing your donate link on Facebook or Instagram, you can share it with this referral code. And then in your Mighty Cause donations report, it's going to include that referral code. So in your report, you can see how many donors came from Facebook, how many came from Instagram, how many came from, you can even label it email one, email two, email three, whatever you want it to be. Um, you can utilize a referral code to keep track of that on your donations report. As well on Mighty Cause, you have a social share setting. So when you share your post on Facebook or Twitter, you know, you'll commonly see when you share a link, usually there's an image and some text that pops up. Um, there's a setting in Mighty Cause where you can update that if you want to change the language, change the image, um, see what that looks like. You can do that within your organization dashboard settings. And here are a couple of free tools that I think are really helpful um, when it comes to social media. So Canva, of course, is an awesome tool for templates and easy design. We also have our marketing toolkit. So that includes templates guides. We also have graphics there and our own templates that are Canva templates. So um, there's a direct link that you can start editing within um, Canva. Linktree, which is great for Instagram and Instagram bios um, that consolidates all of your links. Unsplash.com, um, which is provides royalty-free stock photos. CapCut for easy video editing um, for your stories, your reels, or TikTok. And Buffer is a free tool that you can utilize, and it's an email scheduler and planner. So if you want to pre-schedule um, any posts or Instagram posts, Buffer is a really great tool to schedule those out. And again, it's free to utilize it. All right, so we're going to go through social media best practices for each platform. Again, I'll try to get through these quickly to get to the examples. Um, so Facebook, some best practices. So um, uh, for Facebook, you want to, photos and videos obviously um, are gonna receive higher engagement rates. Um, <clears throat> they're more likely to be seen than any links or texts. Um, that's where sharing impact stories with compelling images or videos can be really um, powerful. Um, you can post regular updates about your mission and your achievements. So if you have a match, posting about your match and sharing how far you are into your match, um, sharing kind of inspirational or uplifting content also performs well on Facebook. Post that 
create engagement. So ask questions, also perform well that kind of require comments or messages. Um, you want to think about, again, what makes, um, how to get people engaged actively in your posts. Um, so for Instagram, we talked about Canva templates is a really great um, asset because again, Instagram is really, it's all visual. Um, you want to include clear call to action in your bio. That's where Linktree comes in and you can, your Linktree can include all of your links. Carousel posts with educational or informational content also performs well on Instagram. Um, and you want to use stories and, and reels. Uh, many users on Instagram don't sometimes scroll through grid posts and they just watch stories or they'll just watch reels. Um, and when it comes to hashtags, we talked about hashtags before. It, with Instagram, hashtag, ha hashtags have become, um, since a couple, for a couple of years, hashtags have become not as important. Um, so that's really more related, I would say, to maybe Facebook or Twitter, Twitter and TikTok. Um, if you haven't done so yet, definitely convert your Instagram account to a business account um, so that you can connect your organization's Facebook Facebook page with your Instagram account, and it makes your life much more easier. Um, and also you can repurpose content. So if you create a video, you know, and you post it on your grid or your, you make it a post, you can share that on um, your stories. If you do a live stream, you can make that into a video for your post. Um, if you do a video content, you can make that into a carousel post. Um, so you can repurpose your content um, in different social media platforms, but also in itself in different ways. <clears throat> so a couple of different engagement ideas. So you can do a live stream on Giving Tuesday. Um, you can do uh, a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. You can spotlight your supporters. Um, so Twitter best practices. Um, again, we kind of talked about this, but hashtags, um, quote tweets are also really powerful. So <clears throat> retweeting um, a post that has already a lot of engagement and adding information to it is also really helpful. Um, with Mighty Cause, you can utilize our kind of share Twitter link and it will create a short Twitter link um, or URL that you can share on Twitter. Um, because Twitter has, you know, limited um, characters that you can utilize. All right, some LinkedIn best practices. Sorry, we're going to go a little bit over, so I apologize. Um, LinkedIn best practices. Um, if you don't have a LinkedIn page yet, I recommend creating one. I think it's a really great way to also network with other organizations, with potential sponsors, etc. Use your board of directors and staff to share your page. Um, you can highlight your staff. Um, and notify your employees when you create a new post, post so that they can engage with it. Um, you can share impact reports and your milestones. And again, you can also uh, connect with corporate donors and partners. All right, TikTok. Uh, so one thing, again, I kind of talk about with TikTok is you want to go with where your audience is. Um, TikTok may be something that you want to try to experiment with, um, which is perfectly okay. But again, you know, make sure that you are using your time wisely. So some TikTok best practices for TikTok, you want to think about authenticity. You want to create authentic, unpolished content. Um, you want to use trending hashtags and sounds. Um, and I shared a link of where you can find where those trending sounds are. Um, with TikTok, you can also ex experiment with their carousels and don't be shy for asking for help. So maybe, you know, go post on volunteermatch.org for social media help. Um, ask volunteers, an intern, et cetera. Maybe your local university has, you know, in their communications department, someone who's willing to um, provide support for your Giving Tuesday. All right, I'm going to get to some examples, which I think are the most important. Um, so here is a great example that I think is really effective when it comes to social media posts. They had a match going on, but it's super direct. Last chance, make two times the impact for Oceans this Giving Tuesday. Time is running out to participate in the biggest giving day to give back to the oceans, donate to Oceana today, and take a stand against harmful plastic pollution, dirty offshore drilling, irresponsible fishing, and other dangerous threats to planet's oceans. So 
super direct as to what the call to action is, what the impact is, and also what their nonprofit essentially does. Uh, this is an example of a carousel post. So hello, for, um, hello, friend. Did you know it's Giving Tuesday? This year, your donations will go towards making the ranch more ADA accessible. This includes adding turf to additional areas, ramps, where needed, and replacing gates. Ways to donate, other ways to help. Um, I love this example because, again, super to the point, very clear. This is what we're doing, why we need support, and where you can make a donation. The one probably feedback I would give to them is maybe make it simpler in terms of ways to donate. You make it one, you want to make it super simple, like one place to donate on Mighty Cause, our donation button, it allows for people to donate via PayPal or Venmo. So just by kind of switching that out, you kind of remove two different links that people don't have to think about or go to. Um, so this is a different type of also social media post. This is like a testimonial. So thanks to Shanti Bobbins, unwavering faith in me. I don't have to work in a matchbox factory like my mom. Soon I'll be able to help her have a better life. Um, so again, this is kind of a different type of social post that you can utilize where you're sharing um, that content. All right. So um, this is a video. Hey, um, let me make sure my audio is coming through. And again, I apologize that this is going over. Um, um, sorry. Can you guys hear this? Can you let me know in the chat? Okay. Let me, I apologize. Um, uh oh, okay. I found it. Okay. Can you hear this now? Okay, perfect. All right. We don't know each other. Hey, my name's Ariel, and I know we don't know each other, but I need your help. So once upon a time, I had a sister named Muriel who was diagnosed with osteosarcoma or bone cancer. Unfortunately, Muriel found out that the cancer was terminal, but instead of moping around, she wanted to do one last good deed before she died. So during her last Christmas, Muriel asked friends and family to donate toys to her, and she stuffed some stockings and sent it to Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital. She wanted to do this because she knew all too well how much it sucked to be a kid in the hospital during the holidays, and she wanted to give these kids a reason to smile one last time. Sadly, we lost her that following February in 2014. In her memory, my family created a charity known as Muriel's Miracle Holiday Stockings. Every December, we get together with a bunch of volunteers, and we donate all kinds of good things to local children's hospitals. But due to COVID, we haven't really had many volunteers in the last year or so. That's where you come in. So there's a couple ways you can help us whether you have money or not. If you'd like to donate stocking stuffers, you can check out our wish list on Amazon. It's under Muriel's Miracle. Or you could fill stockings and send it to your local children's hospital in Muriel's honor. You could also send monetary donation. Or you could simply use your word of mouth and boost this video. Do at this comment like anything helps. We donate to kids of all kinds, 0 to 18, boy, girl, neutral, you name it. Links to the Amazon wish list and the official Facebook page can be found in my link tree. And if you're able to help us this season, I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for helping me keep my sister's spirit alive. So I love that example because, again, it's, I think that video was, let's see how long it was. It was here. just minute 30 um, and really gets to the point of what their nonprofit does and how people can help. Again, in a minute 30, really um, super clear about what she is asking for people to do and where they can support. Hey, my name's Ariel. All right, so this is another example um, from the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. Tuesday, November 28th is Giving Tuesday, and we were wondering, why do you give on Giving Tuesday? We give to the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina because they serve 34 counties throughout Central and Eastern North Carolina, providing food for approximately 700 partner agencies. They give food to our neighbors directly. They have so many programs that help our neighbors get the nutritious food that they need, while also providing opportunities for them to thrive. And the Food Bank has been doing this work for over 40 years. You know, food builds community, and I want to help make sure no one goes hungry. And the food bank does a really great job of doing that. And today only, your gift could be triple matched. So please, make a gift on. 
So again, super short um, to the point. And I, this is why in the beginning of the webinar, I talk about the communication and the messaging, because that's going to help when you're creating this content of what is in, you know, in the simplest way, what my nonprofit does and what I need to do. Tuesday, never okay. All right, this is just, there are just a, you know, one or two left. Today is just the corner. The Tuesday after Thanksgiving is called Giving Tuesday. And it's a global day of supporting your favorite nonprofit organization to be very and want to walk around the world. The National Down Syndrome Society will eat an every day to create a better world for individuals with Down syndrome to die and their families. We will reconsider a donation of any amount. I'm going to just go to the next one and talk about why I'm showing both of these ones. I choose to be a part of Common DC to be part of a creative community. Helping migrants share stories, skills, and experiences. And also I managed to give back to the community and share my knowledge about something that I'm passionate about. I got to share my story as immigrants and was really proud of it. I taught Thai cooking classes in person and virtual. Karma DC helped me build more friendships as well as confidence. I hope together we can build a platform, support a community, and give to Karma DC. So the reason why I pick those, because I think those are great examples of, again, using the people that are in your support network. So um with the National Down Syndrome of, um, Society, those are people that directly benefit from that organization. With Common DC, they're a nonprofit that um, up uplifts immigrant voices. And so they host um, events where immigrants can uh, host, create a cooking class, share their stories, et cetera. So they use those speakers and those um, people that do offer kind of their um, gifts um, that they share to share what they share on Common DC. So again, way to utilize that collaboration. I, I choose to be a part. um I just shared that because I love animal <laughs> videos um I always feel like animal organizations have a leg up they have the they have really easy content to share um and then this is the last one um this is um, just, uh, just for context. So I shared this one because this is an example of how peer to peer fundraising can be, um, really powerful and how it can share your presence on social media as well. So this is someone who is raising money for an organization. They're saying I'm raising $500 for giving Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So again, just a simple four second video, but this person, because they're raising, um, raising funds for this organization, they're sharing it on their social media, their friends and family are seeing it. Um, and that nonprofit is getting more exposure from it. So that's also the power of peer to peer fundraising and where again, having people in your network sharing your organization is really helpful. Um, all right. So last things before I'll get to some final questions. Um, the next webinars. So next webinar we have is if you're interested in end of year fundraising, we'll have a webinar, the top five um, year end end of year fundraising strategies. Um, 
and also last minute tips for Giving Tuesday. Um, if you are behind on planning your Giving Tuesday campaign, you can join us for there. We'll give you some like last minute tips that you can do to get your campaign together. Um, this is all available in our toolkit, but here are the resources as well. Again, I will send the slide deck afterwards and um, you'll have all these links available. Okay, so I'm going to jump to some questions. Um, does Mighty Cause promote Giving Tuesday to its followers? So our platform, we are a fundraising technology provider. So we don't, um, we don't interact with any of your donors. So we don't communicate to donors. We, um, your donors are your donors. So we don't take any of that information and we don't, um, we're not sharing your organization in that way. Our platform is designed to provide you the tools that you need to fundraise and, you know, reach those fundraising goals that you have. Um, we participated last year and still have that event page. Should we make a new one in 2024? Can we just use the old one um, to the new year? Um, you can use the same one. You don't have to create a new one. Um, it, it really just, sometimes people like to create a new one just for their own organization. They kind of like to historically have a 2023 page and then have a new one, but you can utilize the same one and you can just update, you know, you can even update your URL if it says 2023 um, and just include the language. So no, you don't have to create a new page. Um, as I mentioned, this webinar is going to be sent out. Do, does Mighty Cause charge to prompt our campaign? Uh, we, we don't charge anything um, in addition to just our like standard donation fees. That, that's it. Um, what if this is your first fundraising campaign? Um, if this is your first fundraising campaign, um, again, I would stick to your network of people, right? So this is your first nonprofit and your first fundraising campaign. You want to just send it to your friends, your family, your coworkers, if you have coworkers, if, um, you know, if you're not full-time in your nonprofit yet. Um, as I mentioned, like in the story earlier, I, you know, i have been donating to nonprofit because my sister shared them to me. Um, so you never know where your donors come from and what kind of, you know, how they, why they gravitate towards you, et cetera. But asking your friends and family to share it with their coworkers, to share the story of, you know, why did you start your nonprofit? What are you raising money for? Again, this is where the kind of like the messaging and having it super simple and easy when you have it very super easy it also helps your network of supporters to communicate that to their friends and family. They started this nonprofit because there weren't any programs in the community for this and they're raising money to create a program. Um, who do we contact to change organizations contacts on the Mighty Cause platform? You can contact support at mightycause.com if you aren't an admin um, and you need access. Um, if you're already an admin, you can just do that in your settings um, as an admin. Um, I have started creating the Mighty Cause Giving Tuesday campaign, but I would like to change the it to match our brand and include more impact stories or graphics. Is this possible? Yep, it is possible. Your inline text editor should be able to, you can add new images and videos. Um, you can change the color, or if you create a campaign, um, you can um, add all that information too. Um, what are your tips on finding a matching donor? Um, so we just had a webinar on matching grants. So you can, I would recommend checking out that webinar. Um, and that will, we dive into like who you reach out to matching donors, like language, all of that stuff. So, um, I would definitely recommend checking that out because that is a whole deep dive on matching grants. Okay. Um, where, where do we contact to get the Mighty Cause logo? I haven't gotten this yet. Um, so any graphics, if you need the Mighty Cause logo, um, I don't think it's, 
on the Giving Tuesday graphics, I can add all of that if that's helpful. Um, but we do have already like um, Giving Tuesday, like the, lo the logos of Giving Tuesday in our graphics toolkit. Um, I can add it there, but that is all available in the marketing toolkit for Giving Tuesday. Um, our webinars can be found at, give me one second, I can send you, oops, your webinars. Um, So all of our past webinars are available there and you can access and you can listen to them there. Okay, I will add, I'll add all of those logos in the toolkit. Um, so you'll have that available. I'll be able to do that probably this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Um, okay, I'm going to end there. I know we went very over time, but I'm happy to hear that a lot of people are saying this was so helpful. Um, I, that I'm, that's really awesome. Um, okay. One last question. I need to create one friend day campaign. If I also participate in give Miami day. So if you're participating in give Miami day, you don't have to register for mighty cause. You can just, um, participate in give Miami day. Um, and you just create a campaign for give Miami day and that's it. Okay. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll put the email here, support at mightycause.com. I'm so happy that this was so helpful for everyone. Let us know if you have any other questions. And yeah. Um, oh, last thing I should say before everyone logs off. Um, after this webinar closes, you'll be asked a survey. Um, we are always looking for other topics to cover. So if this was helpful, if there's other topics you want us to cover in the future, let us know because I look at those and that helps us decide our webinar um our, our webinar content um later on. So let us know what is helpful.